Hello my hungry friends, today we're making sour rye soup, Rurek. Welcome back to my kitchen. Thank you for subscribing, thank you for liking my videos and thank you for watching. Uh, today we'll be making Polish sour rice soup. This soup is called Żurek and is always served uh, in Poland for Easter. Uh, Żurek is made out of flour that's been soured for a few days and in Poland we can buy uh, already made product in the store. But I'm going to show you a really easy way to do it at home since this is quite difficult to find in America. Uh, so we're going to start by preparing our, our starter and I have started it a few days ago just to show you how it looks like in the process. But we'll get to that. So what we're going to need is a glass jar and I've washed this and put some hot water in it to sanitize it and kind of swirl it around. Uh, so that's ready and we're going to need half a cup of rye flour. That goes in and we're going to need, I have four cloves of garlic that I'm just going to crush. We want the aromatics uh, from the garlic to come out and flavor our starter. So that's going to go in and now we have peppercorns whole and I'm just going to grab a bunch and I have Allspice, also whole. I'm gonna grab a bunch also and throw it in. Allspice is normally, you can buy this in, in um, a large grocery store. It'll be in your spice aisle. And it looks like peppercorns. They're just little dried berries like this. And we use this a lot in the Polish kitchen. And I have bay leaves here. And I'm also gonna grab a few and drop it in there. All of this is gonna make base for our for our soup and I also have dried marjoram herb also available in your spice aisle so I'm putting a tablespoon of that and this makes our starter I'm gonna add uh, I have two cups of boiled and cooled water just make sure your water is cold otherwise it'll uh, the water with the flour clumped together. We don't want to do that. So get yourself a whisk and just pour that in and whisk it around. Making a starter to most, I feel, seems pretty complicated, but this is all you have to do. And your starter will now sit in a warm spot of your home. I have a sunny side in my apartment here in Poland. Uh, I get sun there most of the day. I will take this and set it on the window, no cover. Uh, just cover it with nice and clean kitchen towel and set it in a warm spot in your home and just let it do its thing. It's gonna have to sit like this for three, four days, depending on uh, ambient temperature in your, uh, in your home. But it has to start kind of fermenting together and souring. Now we don't want it um, becoming, what's the word? We don't want it molding, we just want the flour to sour in the water. So I have made mine a few days ago and it's been sitting and doing its thing and this is what it looks like. The water and flour had separated, which is normal, but every day or so you can go in and give it a nice stir and then cover it and let it go again. So after three days or so, uh, you can feed, this, we call it feeding the starter. So then on day three or four, you're gonna feed the starter by adding another half a cup of rye flour and a cup of water. So I'm gonna start with the flour. And then have a cup of water measured here. So make sure you use boiled water. Uh, boiling obviously kills bacteria in it and we want it as clean as possible. So I'm gonna add my cup here and also whisk it together. 
and then we are gonna set it again in a warm spot of your home covered with the kitchen towel and wait another three four days so how do you know whether it's time to add more flour uh, you can come up to it and smell it you'll smell the sourness coming from it and if you keep it going for three five days even it's not gonna hurt it or kill it or anything so you don't have to worry too much about the chemistry or semantics be, be, behind it it's pretty it's pretty easy so once we have once the few days went by and we have fed our starter then another few days went by make sure to stir it every day your starter is ready uh, you don't have to use it right away you can then you would seal your jar and store it in a fridge until you're ready to make your soup this will store in a fridge for for a few weeks easily uh, so if, if you're making if you're planning on making this for Easter it's time to make it or it's a few weeks before the big event you can make your starter then close your lid close the jar put it in the fridge and then when you're ready to make the soup you can just pull it out I'm not gonna close it because mine has to breathe for a while yet so now we're gonna get to the soup so now to make the soup uh, we are gonna do our base with using um, our homemade Polish fresh sausage and this is the one that we uh, posted a video for uh, a week ago I encourage you to make your own it's delicious uh, it's really hard to find in the, in the States uh, so I was always forced to make my own which is no big deal um, so I'm gonna use two of those sausages and if you can't find those or you can't make them at home uh, I posted a recipe to use smoked bacon uh, just get a nice slab of uh, fragrant and a nice bacon I have about four ounces here and I'm gonna pop the two sausages in here uh, for our base and I also have uh, pars not pars parsley root that's been peeled and I have two carrots and I have a little piece of celery root that um, I just peeled that's gonna bring a nice flavor to our soup and I have half a small onion that's been burnt I do this for most of my soup uh, soups it uh, provides awesome flavor you can't you can't make this up with anything that comes in a package as far as flavoring goes so uh, go ahead and and burn one on uh, either if you have gas stove you can put your onion straight on the grate and burn it for a little bit and if you have an electric stove like I do I put it on the cast iron uh, skillet dry or a dry pan will work too and just burn it for for a little bit so that goes in uh, this is gonna go oh, and I have four cups of water in here so this will go for about 30 minutes I'm gonna start I'm gonna start this on high bring it to boil and then turn it down to low and just let it slow slow simmer we don't want the uh, the sausage to kind of break apart or anything it will draw the flavor out of the vegetables and create a nice base broth for our soup if you're using uh, your homemade starter you don't have to add any other spices like I have in the recipe the peppercorns the allspice the bay leaves because all of that is going to go in with our starter now if you're using the store-bought starter um, I would add uh, a few peppercorns, few allspice, and few bay leaves to your uh, to your base, and some salt. And I, I'll post a recipe, or just I'll post a link to my recipe right below this video. So on this goes. And just cover it and let it go. We'll see you in 30 minutes. Our soup has been boiling for about 30 minutes and we have a nice fragrant base. I am not going to taste it for saltiness just yet uh, because I'm still adding my starter. Uh, so before you do this, give it a nice stir and we're only going to use two cups out of this. The rest of your starter you can either keep storing in the fridge or you can feed it some more. You can add one cup of flour, uh, I'm sorry, half a cup of flour and one cup of water 
give it a good stir and then keep it out again for three, four days. It'll make a little bit more starter and you'll have for the next batch. So I'm going to measure out two cups. And I'm going to pour this into my soup. And we want to, so this will do a few things. Um, it will, one, obviously give us the flavor of the sour rye. Uh, two, it will thicken the soup greatly. And if you want to take a look at it, you see my dog click clacking around. Uh, the sausage that we put in here had turned white. That's why we call it white sausage. Uh, bacon uh, rendered a little bit of the fat and the soup turned this lighter color. Uh, and this is what the flour did. And now <clears throat> when we bring this to boil, the, the, the flour will thicken our, our broth. So I'm gonna uh, bring it up to boil and then I'm gonna taste it and I may have to add a little bit of salt and pep definitely pepper. <clears throat> but if you're using uh, uh, bacon, it, the salt will kind of depend on uh, how salty your meat is also. So I didn't put a whole lot of salt at first, just about uh, one teaspoon. So we'll bring this up to boil and boil it for probably three minutes. It's been a couple minutes, let's check on our soup. It's bubbling, it is significantly uh, more uh, thick or thicker. <clears throat> I'm gonna give it a little taste and definitely add some pepper right now. Just a few turns of my grinder and give it a stir. And that should be all we need. Oh yeah, that is done. Now I would suggest that you make this today and eat it the next day, or make it one day and eat it the next. It just flavor, lets the flavors combine. <clears throat> the soup will thicken a little bit more and draw a little bit more flavor out of your sausage and your bacon. You can also use smoked sausage as a base for the soup. Uh, all this kind of smoky meats are uh, working great with this sour flour. Uh, so just kind of try what you can and uh, get, give yourself a little uh, slack as far as ingredients go. Uh, the most important one is the sour flour, uh, sour rye flour, so I'd focus on that. So now for serving. As I mentioned before, the soup will be served at Easter and this will open our Easter festivities as far as the culinary uh, part of it. And we will serve it with uh, half of hard boiled egg. So I have a couple of servings in here. And then we will take the sausage that was in here in our soup and you can put it whole or I like to slice it just because it's easier for eating. So I'm going to do this kind of bite-sized piece. You can do as many as you want in each. Let's do even, three and three. That sounds good. And we're going to pour our soup in and give it a taste. And see how thick it is. And let's see how thick it is. And also, I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of prepared horseradish. I make this at home. Um, it gives this unusual flavor to the soup. And I suggest you do that too. It's a little spicy and it complements the ingredients that are already in here, the sausage likes horseradish, the egg likes horseradish. It's all good, one big family. Let's give this a taste. The horseradish just brings it up a notch. Uh, it's, it's sour from the 
from the flour and you can taste the smoky meats in it and definitely the the guard the crushed garlic that we had in here and the herbs marjoram this just works perfectly together i hope you try my soup and i hope you serve it at your next easter smachnego